Hello, welcome to the idometric titration of vitamin C. In this particular lab, we are going to analyze the amount of ascorbic acid in first uh, lemon juice concentrated and an unknown sample. And this particular video will show you the techniques that you will need to use for this particular lab. So, I have my lemon juice in a uh, beaker and I'm going to draw 25 milliliters from this particular sample. So, and I've conditioned my pipette, uh, volumetric pipette, so that it's um, rinse with sample that I'm going to use. Try not to have bubbles in your um, aliquot and if you need to, you probably need to repeat the process so that it gives you a fine meniscus. It looks like it's 25 mils. I'm going to go ahead and deliver that sample. Because the lemon juice might be more viscous than water, you might have to wait a longer period of time to make sure that all the lemon juice drains from the volumetric pipette. Make sure you touch the Erlenmeyer flask with the tip of the volumetric pipette so that you draw the residual juice away from the tip. The next step is to add your 10 drops of starch indicator. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And then what you might want to try and do before you even start the experiment is test or uh, do a pre-titration so you know exactly what the endpoint looks like. And what I generally do is I take some uh, analyte that I'm going to analyze, say I put it in this particular beaker. I'm going to add a few drops of starch indicator. And then I'm just going to add some iodine solution to it so I can see exactly what type of endpoint uh, to observe since I'm not familiar with this particular titration technique. As I approach the end point for this particular titration. So now that I know what it looks like, I'm going to go ahead and do my this up. I will be put this on the side so I have a comparison. Take my sample of lemon juice. Place my red there. Move the stock cock in a position where I can open the valve and then I'll go ahead and complete this titration. So, what I'll do is I will read the initial volume of the burette and then I will begin my titration. And initially, I want to go ahead and add my iodine. And as I approach the end point, what should happen is that that murky dark color should persist longer. And I can certainly have a steering bar in my sample, or if you're comfortable, you can stir it with your with one hand and open the stock cock with the other hand. 
as the um, as you reach the equivalence point or the end point, the purple color is going to persist longer. Certainly, you want to be more careful as you approach the end point. That way, you don't over titrate. Now, that was a, a drop. You can see that the color has gone from this lemon juice color right here to this color and certainly this titration that I did earlier is more purple. I would read the final volume at this point and record that in my data because I think, I believe this would be the end point. Certainly going to wash my one drop down and see exactly what happens. And you can see that that half drop actually took it to a darker purple color. So I, I have reached the end point for this particular titration. And these are, this is the pre-titration pre to see what the end point looks like. You can see it's certainly darker than this right here. And this would be the salute, the color of the uh, lemon juice original. So next I'm going to uh, analyze my unknown. And I'm going to do that by taking a 20 ml aliquot, placing it in this Erlenmeyer flask, adding starch solution, and then titrating it to the end point. So for this particular sample, what I'm going to do is, again, do a pre-trial titration to see what the endpoint looks like. So in this particular analysis, what I'm going to do is take my unknown, about 50 milliliters of my unknown solution, take a little bit of that because I'm going to see what the endpoint looks like and I'm going to make sure I have enough unknown in that beaker. Make sure your beaker is clean and preconditioned with your unknown so that you don't dilute it. I'm now going to draw 20 milliliters or if your instructor asks you to change the aliquot amount uh, go ahead and do so because uh, it's taking very uh, smaller volume of the titrant to reach the equivalent point and so you will get a greater relative error if you only use a small portion of your aliquot you want to maximize that as much as possible but in this particular demonstration I'm just going to use 20 milliliters of uh, my unknown solution again you want to make sure that your glassware are clean that you've conditioned your volumetric pipette that you go ahead and do not contaminate your stock solution by putting a small portion into a clean beaker. Draw the correct volume using the pipette bow. Go ahead and pipette it into this Erlenmeyer flask. Then recall that these are calibrated to deliver. So you just want to make sure that all the uh, volume drains and touch the inside of your Erlenmeyer flask. So that the last drop. So uh, what I'm going to do first is make sure, don't forget to add your starch indicator, otherwise you will never see the end point. I'm going to add a few drops of starch indicator to this solution, just so that I know what my end point will look like. I'm going to add a 10 drops of starch indicator to my unknown. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside and do a pre titration on this solution right here. So for this particular titration, what you should see is again a color change as you add iodine. 
and we don't really know what the endpoint looks like, so that's why we're doing this pre titration. The endpoint for this is different from the previous one. Preview previous sample was more murky, certainly purple. This one is more blue and clear. So let's just hit the endpoint real quick and see that this did half a drop. So the endpoint looks like it's a blue salute uh, color compared to the other sample. So I'm just going to place this particular beaker on the side and I'm going to get my sample, get my sample and titrate that to the endpoints. So what I'm going to do is again you could have a magnetic stirrer and that's what I'll use in this particular setup. Go ahead and have a magnetic stirrer here. Make sure it's centered. Make sure that the solution is and certainly adding water will not change the amount of ascorbic acid in your solution here. So I'm just going to add some water. get a nice vortex forming for my titration process and as I start to approach the end point what should happen is that the blue coloration should persist longer You notice that it turned blue, but when I stopped, it cleared up. So I certainly am approaching the end point quickly here. So I'm going to slow my drip rate. And just be patient. Make sure that the blue color persists for at least 30 seconds before you stop your titration and read the final volume. And it looks like that's the end point for this particular analysis. What I will do is uh, read the final volume and do my second trial. This is, is the technique you would use to titrate ascorbic acid. First the lemon juice, known solution, and then your unknown. The endpoints were different for the two samples and it always helps to do a pre-titration to get an idea of what the endpoint looks like.